I'm Kara Thorson from Yoga Equanimity. Our philosophy here is meet the resistance. What we resist persists. So we look to meet the resistance with equanimity. So the practice, um, alignment matters. If we are out of alignment uh, mentally or physically or any one of those counterparts, then it's going to be really difficult to navigate through life. And so the practice, because it's alignment focused to begin with physically, it brings us into those behavioral aspects we may not have been able to recognize without that barometer or physical reflection. So the practice really gives us a touchstone to bring us further and challenge those boundaries and become what we aren't through what we are. I was born with the gift of illnesses one after the other from birth. So those gifts of unfortunate ill health made me to take to you. <laughs> I was suffering from influenza, malaria, tuberculosis, typhoid, and so on and so forth. Then I thought that is it worth living? depending on someone forever. It's constantly fresh and refreshened. It's an experience that we're having as we're going through it, but it's deepened as we go through it. So the longer we practice and the more consistently over time we practice, the more experiential that subject becomes or that experience becomes and the practice becomes. So we start to really see what's divined in those ancient scripts to how it applies in that modern life as we open those channels, uh, as we open those channels through the practice. People had their own way of presenting my subject. So when I looked at the poses in my early days, they speak of Shirshasana, they speak of Sarvangasana or Halasana. They say the legs should be straight, the legs will not be straight. In Shirshasana, the legs will be perpendicular, it will be swinging to this side or that side. Then I thought, what is this? They write one thing and they don't even observe in the illustrations what they have said has come or not. That's why I thought, no, I should make something for make people to get, you know, attracted to this subject. So as you make a, a tasteful salad, So the philosophy of yoga is a real favor Patanjali has given us. It's the eight limbs. So it's a sequence to bring the mind back to a state of equanimity, to understand all those fluctuations, those rising tides that happen and rising tides that may bring us to a high, but also those rising tides that will bring us to a low. So it brings us all those patterns so that we can observe clarify, rectify, and become one with ourselves. And in becoming one with ourselves, we can become one with the world. And the world really needs that, that humanity right now. So there is a diversity in our body. And when we can bring this diverse body into a, into a single union, then the person who does himself, having realized the diversity and bringing out unity in that diversity, naturally it is very useful for him when he spreads the art of yoga, how to bring the diverse people to, to unify with single thought. So, we, you know, we have gobs of different therapies. We have physical therapies. We have psychological therapies. We have sex therapies. We have all of these therapies that are individualized and categorized and all in their own right can be spectacular and helpful to the human race. But I have never found one therapy that has all of those inside. And Iyengar did that. He brought us so deep into our own bodies that we have been able to penetrate all of those psyche or psychic disturbances within us. So he really, 
He asked us and brought us to ourselves. And one of my favorite things about him is that he had standards. He had standards for himself. He had standards for us. And that means he had standards for the world. And it's much better to know that someone had standards for us to meet than just said, okay, well, you didn't really do a good job or you don't feel like doing it, no problem. He held us to that firm ground. And I have yet to see anything in my life that has paralleled him. I have yet to see his equal.